And uh, here and now, we will have a lecture by Mazen Kebaj. He's, uh, he's a musician. Um, I, I want to say musician in the first place, but I'm not sure what comes first. Me neither. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say musician in the first place, but let's say... Uh, uh, this is the point of departure. He, as a musician, he's drawing comics, and as a comics artist, he's making uh, music. Um, um, well, most of, well, he, he was born in Beirut in 1975, and he works on illustration and design projects. Um, his stor stories have been published in uh, many anthologies all, all over the world in many languages. And uh, as you probably know, one of his latest creation is a mural in, uh, in Ljubljana, he was working on it today, all day, and uh, I have great respect for you that you're now standing here, also uh, sharing uh, thoughts and ideas. Um, I'm not going to take much time to introduce, I, I think that um, your presentation will speak for itself. Afterwards, we will have um, questions, and I think there is also some sound in your presentation. Let's Ho hope. Hopefully it will work, yeah. Hopefully it will work. Is this please, working? Uh, yeah. Please, uh, warm uh, applause for Mazen Kebash. Yeah, thank you, Guido. Thank you for having me here also, uh, Remix Comics. Um, as usual, I prepared very little, so I have these small notes that I needed to write again. Um, but then I was working on the mural, so I'll do what I do uh, best, which is improvising. Um, first of all, I'll talk a little bit about... about um, I'll present myself a little bit quickly and then about the theme, capturing time. And then later on, I'll present uh, some of my work that relates to the theme and then we can discuss them together. So yeah, I'm a um, comics artist, I'm a visual artist. Uh, let's say I'm an, I'm an artist dealing with many things. Uh, my main concern or, or one of my main uh, things is comics. Um, I never wanted to be a cosmonaut. I remember being six years old saying, I want to be a comics artist. And uh, maybe I'm so stubborn that I ended up doing it. Um, later on, I discovered music. So I'm a comics artist who does music, actually. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit also about music. I know we are here to talk about comics. Uh, but my practice is really, um, my both practices are really very influential one on, on the other. So the music I play is, for not a better term, is called free improvised music. Uh, it's music where there is no, ne not necessarily harmony or rhythm or melody. It's uh, music based on sound and uh, most importantly it's created in the moment. And this is very important for what I will talk when I refer to music or my music practice later on, the idea that it is created in the moment and then it disappears, it doesn't exist anymore. So, um, yeah, capturing time. Uh, this is the idea that came when I was asked to do a lecture. Um, I feel capturing time is, um, uh, the more I'm asked in my practice since long time, like what are the themes or what are your concerns, etc., uh, in your work, uh, with time, capturing time comes on, on top, or time passing by and how to capture it uh, seems to be um, my main concern. And it's not something I decided, it wasn't my artist statement. It's really after uh, thinking a lot and, uh, and reviewing uh, some of my, of my stuff and talking about them or writing about them that I realized it is the most uh, um, enduring thing in, in, in my work. Um, I'll just put one thing that we can um, have, then we don't have this black thing for the whole. So this is one work from <coughs> 2004. I'll call it an early work. Um, it's in French, I'll translate it for you. So uh, the first uh, um, up, the first sentence is, uh, oh, how I would like to be able to see or to hear or to smell or to taste or to touch the passing time. Um, I like to put this one in the beginning because it, it, it talks uh, on the one hand of this idea of capturing time that is really since very long uh, present in my work, but it also talks about comics and um, uh, it's really um, interesting 
to see it, how, how, how I, I put this sentence in, in, uh, in one page. Um, the most interesting is not for me the fact that you have the eyes who are seeing, which are seeing, the nose is smelling, so, so each bubble is coming from, from the sense that is uh, using it. But the most interesting for me is this four frames at the end where it's written le temps qui passe, so the passing time. Um, it's interesting because in comics, passing time is really very special and very different from any other art form. Um, time doesn't pass and passes in, in, yeah, in very different forms. So um, I will talk very quickly about other art form like cinema, for instance. The time that passes is the time of the action. Then we have a cut and there is another, there is an ellipse, there's another thing, but, but you see the movement and you hear the sounds in real time in each scene. Um, in a painting, time doesn't pass, so it's really, or, or in photography for that matter, it's really a fixed time uh, that you can see and you can imagine what's happening before and after. Um, in reading, of course, you have to decide how time is passing, but still you have to follow the flow of, of, uh, of the sentences and making the story in your head somehow. Um, in music, which I consider... Uh, both as uh, the most inferior art and the most superior art of all. Uh, I'll, I, if I have time, I'll, I'll, I'll say why. But in music, and specifically in this music I'm talking about, which is free improvised music, uh, time passes for real, so, so it's real-time music. It's called, by the way, in Germany, Echtzeitmusik, which means real-time music. Um, which means the time for creating the music is the time for listening to it, and specifically in a concert, the time and the space of the music are the time and the space, both for the audience and for the musician. So it's really, yeah, what, what you hear is what you get somehow. Um, on, the other, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, time passes in a really peculiar way uh, in comics. Um, so between each two frames of comics, even if I have somebody um, standing and then looking at his watch in the second frame, I need as a reader to fill the space between this and that. Of course, this is very simple, but then bet between each two frames, there is this white gutter that I am constantly in need to fill with my imagination. So when I see Tintin on the phone saying to somebody, yes, I'm coming, and then I see him in the car, I, I have to, in, in, in the split second, I imagined already uh, Tintin putting his uh, uh, jacket, going down the stairs or the elevator, um, going to the car, going in, and then driving, it's starting the car and driving. This is a very small ellipse, but between each two frames of of, uh, of uh, comics, there is this ellipse that the reader has to do. Um, then there is, in the frame itself, the time is really a very weird uh, thing. So you have two persons talking together, and then one is like uh, 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 ast uh, astonished by what the other is saying, so we see this first. Then we have to read all what the other is saying and, and imagine how it sounds and then arrive to the guy who is astonished and what he is saying. So, so it's really very weird because you have one instant, like a, like a photography, one instant moment, but then the time for saying whatever is said in the thing might be one minute. So it's really, uh, again, for the reader to decide where to put the sound, like where, what was happening just before he was like, uh, astonished by, by, by what the other is saying. Um, again, it's very elongated time, so um, the sound that is happening, the sound effects, or uh, what, is this, what is said, give us an idea of what is the time of each frame. Then there is the time of the whole page, when we open a double page, a spread of comics. It's, it's, there is no other art in the world where, where, uh, or form of art where you, where you see at once the future and the past and the present and everything together. Each spread that you open, you can't but already see what's happening at, at the, on, the, on the, end, uh, uh, the end frame. It was used to, call, uh, to be called in French in the classic period, le suspense de bas de page, so they would do something to make you want to arrive here and to turn the page. 
And each frame in itself, when we are reading it, we are seeing the future, which is the frame just next to it, and the past, which is the frame before it. All this makes uh, the, the language of comics really um, very special uh, in, in dealing with time passing. Plus, when you flip through a comic book, it's not at all like when you flip through a, a book. Uh, when you slip, flip through a book, I mean, the easiest example is if you forgot to put a bookmark in your book and you want to find where you were, it's like hell. You have to go and then read a little bit. Oh, this I read, and then to continue. Oh, fuck, this I didn't read. And then with the comics, it's so easy. Like you just flip through the book and you know directly somehow where you were and, and what you read and, and what not. So all this is very specific to the language of comics, but then there is two other times in the language of comics. One time is the time of reading the comics, and comics is the only, uh, is, is the only form of art where it's the reader who decides how long it will take to read the comics. And it sounds... Uh, uh, very uh, simple like this, but it's really uh, um, yeah, unprecedented in any other form of art. So if you have one comics of 50 pages, it could take somebody 10 minutes to read and another person two hours to read. So it's really you who decide when you have it in your, like how long do you want to stay on each frame? Some people are very uh, contemplative when reading them, or some comics call for some contemplative reading. Some other are really more, uh, um, made for fast reading. Of course, you could argue that a book also, you can read it in one week or in, in two months, etc. depending if you are a fast reader or not. But with a book, once you are reading, you are reading. I mean, a sentence takes the same time to read for anybody, while a frame can really, the same frame, be read. You could stay uh, virtually an hour looking at the frame just because it's nicely drawn or, or whatever. So, all this is about the time passing for the viewer and, and in the language of comics. But then there is also, and most importantly for me, the time of creating the comics and, and uh, the way of creating the comics versus creating music. So comics, maybe as visual art, but comics specifically, takes a lot, lot, lot of time to be, to be created. Uh, I remember Chris Ware doing once one of his pages very complex with, with many things inside where he makes a ratio on how much time it takes to do a comics and how much time it takes to be read and like he compares it to other things and indeed it's the most catastrophic. Like it takes one year, two years to do a comics. Daniel Close took five years to do his last comics. I guess it takes two days to, to be read. Um, but more than time, it's mostly the relation to the work um, that I want to talk about. Um, I've always been interested, as many artists, I think, by the process of doing things uh, more than the result. Of course, I try to do some good work or, or whatever. This is very subjective. But I'm mostly uh, interested in the time I am doing the work and in the process I'm doing it. Um, with comics, it's a very uh, solitary work. It's very um, introvert almost. So you are alone, you are doing your stuff. You share with, with, with your wife or your husband or your kids or some friends. But then when, when the, the, the thing is being done, when it is alive for you, it's something very personal. And then when it's born for the audience, when it's published, it's dead for you. It's really a very, very big paradox for, for, uh, for writers and, and, and comics authors. So um, this idea that you see the viewer or, or the reader just when you sign your autographs on, on the book is really something weird, especially if you are a musician, where, whereas the process, again, in the music I play, uh, the process is the result. So I come, I play the music, we share it together in the same time, then there's nothing left. You could record it, but, but arguably it's something else. It's not, not the same. So, um, so capturing time, how to capture this, this moment passing by um, and how to render it in comics and in music, maybe at the end we'll, we'll talk about it again. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, this has been um, the thing I'm, 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 I'm looking for or working on since ever. I'll show some examples from various um, periods of my work and various styles. Uh, as you will see, some people uh, see it as a very bad thing, but I have no style in my work. I, I take it as a compliment or, <laughs> or it's something I've been looking for all my life, uh, the idea of not having a style or of trying to escape from any kind of style. I guess I end up, this non-style ended up being one, but it's, it's another talk. So from the same period, 2004, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about this, this one that is translated to English. So uh, it's very influenced by Chris Ware, uh, just the idea of, of these arrows. Um, I am here now. I am not here. I'm not anymore here now. I might be again here, but I'll never be again now. So, of course, I'm stating something uh, very naive, to say the least, but the way of uh, agencing it, I don't know how to say it in English, agencé, uh, to, to put it, to put it, to lay out it, uh, was the interesting thing for me in, in, uh, in this page. <clears throat> this is uh, one of my most recent works. Um, it's called, uh, it, it looks very joyful, but the title is a little bit darker. It's called Remember Me When I'm Not Here Anymore. Um, again, in my attempt to always capture time, I'm, um, I always have uh, post-its next to me where I put all kinds of things or I doodle when I'm talking on the phone or I take lists of, uh, of things to buy from the supermarket or uh, things to do list, etc. Uh, so now it's been three or four years I collect these post-its so I don't throw them when I finish from them and I date them and uh, yeah, every now and then I collect them and then put them in the order with no other uh, uh, selection. So it's really, this is another one, so you see the colors are totally random. Uh, the idea is not uh, trying to make a story out of them or, uh, or try to make something that looks nice with colors or, or, or whatnot. Um, it's more really putting these as artifacts from times that passed uh, for me. So at this time, whenever it is, it's dated what I was doing, uh, most of the time it's trivial things, there's nothing really interesting. Sometimes there, is, uh, there are these uh, sentences I write to myself which sound very pedantic, but yeah, I just put them in it. Um, of course, the idea of the post-it as something that you put to remind yourself of something uh, brought the title, uh, remember me when I'm not here anymore. So. Uh, Again, it's a work to try to capture time or to try to fight time passing by, to fight death, to fight all these things. Um, yeah, now uh, this will be exhibited in Beirut in two months. I have, uh, I think, 15 of these one meter by 70. And they are dated one, uh, two, three, a slash. Uh, it's an empty thing that will be hopefully filled after my death or if I ever stop this project. So I wasn't intending to, to be that dark with two things one after the other, but yeah, this is another thing dealing with time very differently. Uh, I was commissioned two pages about the assassinations that were happening in Beirut by Internazionale, an uh, Italian magazine. This was 2007. So I did all these uh, uh, people, bloody people. Um, it was more an improvisation or, or it's more into my visual art, if you want. So in the beginning, there was no story. And then uh, just adding this sentence at the end brought everything together. Chaque jour qui passe nous rapproche un peu plus du passé. So uh, each, pa each day that passes brings us closer to the past. Um, again, it's a way <clears throat> to deal with, uh, with the bloody past we, we grew up in, in Beirut, in the civil war, but also bringing uh, present and past together as if it was the future. So each day that passes normally brings us closer to the future. 
um, yeah, also it's very static. There's no time passing like from one frame to the other. You don't understand what's, what's happening. This, uh, this is an attempt very different also. Um, I was uh, in a bar uh, drinking and then uh, little by little, yeah, you can see the, <laughs> you can show it to people, tell them do not drink and draw because it will end up very bad. So little by little, I'm t they are throwing me out of the bar and then I'm trying to finish one more and then th the last one is done in 30 seconds and then I'm thrown out. Uh, so this I do sometimes, I have always notebooks with me. Uh, I think I have, yeah, this is, um, this is a kind of accordion actually. So it's pages that I tear and then I stick them together. So this all has been drawn in one, uh, one night in, um, in Beirut, being with friends, uh, people are dancing. I'm always in somewhere drawing. Also again, um, uh, being totally drunk possibly haven't taken drugs that I don't talk about here. It's another talk. Uh, but yeah, also it's this idea of trying to, these things I call, uh, it's a series called One Night. So it's really to make a story in the moment, trying to capture it in, in one night, in one go, and then it's one, um, usually I do them in this accordion that you can stick and, and get them um, on the wall. Um, this is a story I did in France. I'll take just, uh, yeah, I mean, I can, I can quickly. I was, I was in a, um, sorry, residency. Oh, 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 hey, calm down, I'm a friend. So this is a residency I was doing in France, and uh, my, uh, my wife, my girlfriend back then, was coming to visit me after two months. And it's just this night, so it's three o'clock in the morning. You must be in the plane. It's four o'clock in the morning. I cannot sleep like a teenager. It's 7.30. I didn't sleep. I'm waiting you at Metro République. And the last one, tonight we will sleep together. So it's also, again, about time. And then after some days when she left, again, I did this where uh, time passes, but you just see the same window uh, with you are sleeping next to me. Me, I am still awake, drawing and imagining you leaving, etc. Tomorrow you will sleep far away from me, and I'll still be here trying to to hear you uh, breathing. Um, this is very, it's a minimalistic, but it's a very uh, slow time passing, so it's really trying to draw something in real time. Um, une journée ordinaire, uh, it's an ordinary day, um, it was also these days in Beirut when you had explosions in 2006, 7, 8. There was a lot of um, yeah, assassinations again. So it's just an ordinary day until, um, until this uh, boom. And then, yeah, we would all do this, go to the TV to see what's happening, put it on, and then the telephone would ring, some people asking you, did you hear, are you okay, etc. And the whole day continues like this. So here I really tried to slow the whole thing and to put as much frames as possible as opposed to the others where um, it was more blown away. Uh, letter to the mother, you can see it here and read it. Um, it's a story that I did. I can tell you, I mean, the, at the end you understand that the mother is Beirut, so I can tell you <laughs> it's okay. Um, I like it, this one, uh, I mean, I like it for this uh, talk. It, it's not about time passing, but it's about the, the, the ruins of time in Beirut. So these things that we grew up with and then that are still here, all this, uh, almost I call them artifacts from the war. So these buildings that were neither torn down nor rebuilt because there is some, some stuff around them. And the whole thing, um, it's a story that I did for Le Monde Diplomatique, but it's one of the stories that stayed in a drawer for 10 years. Each two years, I'll try to draw it. I don't know how, and it's a kind of um, love and hate letter to Beirut. And the idea was here, but I was always trying to find a way to, to draw it. And then when they asked me, and then I said, okay, I'll try to do this for, for the next time. And uh, it just became clear I need not to draw characters, but to draw the city itself, how it is, and all its scars. 
Um, and yes, so the time that passes here is really in the buildings themselves. So, yeah, you can you can read it as I said here. Another interesting uh, thing is um, an adaptation of a poem by French poet uh, Patrick Dubos. Um, fantastic poem that I love to to uh, to adapt. Uh, Autoportrait en marchant et regardant le sol au sol. So self-portrait while walking and looking on the ground or at the ground, to the ground, I don't know. So, yeah, first you see pebble number one, pebble number two, um, fallen leaf, pebble number three, fallen leaf number two, and then, etc. Then there is a sinking, pensée, uh, thought number one, then dogs passing. And uh, when I read it, I found it fantastic and the idea of adapting it like this. And then he arrives somewhere and then comes back. And I remember uh, Patrick, when I sent it to him, I said, I wanted to adapt it. He said, sure, but what did you see in the sink? I said, I don't know, it's really very visual. And then when I sent it to him, he said, I can't believe you saw this <laughs> in my poem. I said, but it is, you know, like it is your poem. I did nothing, I just literally drew the poem. And, so it's very interesting how, again, um, yeah, time passes differently for in writing and, and in, uh, in uh, comics. Um, Un an journée, journal d'une année comme les autres is a book that I have two copies here. Um, for the year 2012, I decided to make one drawing per day on an agenda with uh, dates. So, with, yeah, of course, with dates. Um, again, it's a full year. Uh, in real time somehow, each day passing uh, and, and, and passing by. So I want just to mo show inside some stuff, like there is this, um, this thing that gave me the idea of the post-it much later. The, the, uh, remember me when I'm not here anymore, so it's the day 14th of uh, January, who's telling me to remember it. Then the other page next to it, it's a game. Can you help me to, to fi find the, the way until tomorrow? Uh, here on the seventh, so there is a kind of thing I'm, I'm repeating, uh, punition. I shouldn't forget to do my drawing every day. I shouldn't forget to draw my drawing. And then the character is saying, I hope nobody will, will notice that I made this drawing on the eighth. And then on the 24th, it's a different story. I should not do my, my drawings in advance. And again, I hope nobody will notice that I did this on the 23rd. Uh, so I would try to work with time uh, differently. This on the 10th of uh, Mars, a page of silence to the memory of Moebius. So Moebius died on this day. And the idea of using the page as a minute of silence um, yeah, was also like a kind of conceptual way of, of, of putting time in it. I wonder if somebody looked at it for one minute. I doubt. Um, yeah, here on, the, on this page. So I'm shouting, it works, it works. I come from the future, I come from the future. And then I put, um, I managed to, to travel in time and to come do this drawing. I come from 26 March 20, uh, 2012. So uh, seven, eight days later. And then you have all the drawing in between. And then on the 26th, today I invented the machine, the traveling time machine. Where am I going? Fuck, I'm afraid. What if it doesn't work? So, so it comes really in the book seven pages later where you, you understand the other joke. Again, this is a drawing done, started on 11.15 by night and finished at three o'clock. So I, it's made on two days virtually and it's written um, a journey, uh, yeah, a still journey, and in real time between two days passing by. Uh, yeah, another one here. Sometimes I wouldn't have an idea, so I would just fill with, with patterns. And then the one on the right, I'm filling it, and then I say, stop, put your, your pants down. Uh, yeah, you put, like, like they tell you in school, stop, put your, hand, uh, your pants down because uh, the day finished, it's midnight, so I couldn't continue. Actually, it's ways to get away with, with stuff. It's mostly this, but it's interesting. Again, this um, 
au travail, get to work, will it never finish? So this is drawn on a to-do list, and then the day after, you need always to work to, to, uh, to earn money. What next? And it's made on my uh, bank statement. Chris Marker is dead, also died on this year, and then this Chris Marker is dead, Chris Marker is born, Chris Marker met himself, where is Chris Marker? So again, it's working with this idea of time that Chris Marker, uh, of course, worked in his marvelous uh, La Jeté, where time, uh, where, where he sees himself eventually at the end. Here it's in October, so uh, this page is, yeah, it's working. I'm coming from the past. I'm coming from the past. And then I say again, I managed to travel in time to come and give myself a day of uh, a free day in the future, chosen, chosen by chance. So I just opened anywhere. And it was again the same 26th of March where I invented this machine, but it comes really like 200 pages later in the book. And on the 14th, when I woke up, I say, wow, it's great to discover after 35 hours without uh, dreaming, that, uh, without sleeping, that tomorrow is, uh, is uh, a day off. Yeah, I wonder what I did to be in this state, but that's also another story. <laughs> another thing of time passing by is just taking a flight from Geneva to Tunis, and time passed by just with the colors and uh, the face of the character. Here is just drawing again the page, the empty page that I drew on. Between what I, between what I lived and what, what, I, what is still for me to live, there is this Monday, 3 December. Um, this idea of talking with one day that is passing by is um, characteristic from my work. I try many times to do it in, in different ways. I think there is another work we will see later. Here also, like drawing, 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 to fill time. Um, this is a very different project. It's a composition I was uh, asked to do, commissioned. So I decided to do it in a kind of comics. Uh, I didn't give any instruction. So of course it's very talk, like it, it, it really can talk uh, for itself and it's, there is no instrumentation, so it could be played by solo, duo, trio or whatever. Uh, the interesting thing that I got back from the ensemble who commissioned it is, uh, and of course it was on purpose, like how do we time this? How much should I stay on the first frame? I say, I don't know, you know, you have to, to deal with it and then it gets more and more complex. And then sounds, of course, uh, it's interesting also because in comics, sound passes even weirder than time. You have to really make it in your, in your head. Some authors like Franquin are, are geniuses in, in, in reproducing sound. Some other really use the very um, uh, normal onomatopoeia. But here, like, uh, yeah, at some point I just put later also, and then there is later that day, so it really invites the musician to do whatever they want with it. Um, yeah, and this brings us to the last thing. So um, it's a very special time and very special book and uh, uh, yeah, story. So uh, in 2006, um, there was the uh, war uh, on Beirut, the Israeli war on Beirut uh, called July's War. So for two months or, or a little bit less, uh, Israel was bombing really heavily all Lebanon, uh, heavily as in erasing uh, whole, uh, whole places. Um, I opened a blog back then, um, didn't know anything about blogs, but I was drawing and needed compulsively to put the drawing and to show them to the world. So uh, this was really capturing time um, in, in real time and posting it. So it was really drawing all the time and putting stuff and, and being in this movement. Somehow it helped me to cope with the whole, uh, with the whole thing, um, knowing that all my friends or all people who are not artists uh, had to, to stop working, of course, like nothing was working in the, in the country. And the fact of being able to react uh, makes it somehow easier for artists to cope with this situation because you are really reacting. So this, I tried to capture this moment where uh, they bombed uh, 
a shelter of the UN with kids and, and women and, and, uh, and what not in it. So it's written Kana, which is the, name, the place where it was. We resist is like, uh, I got a lot of insult. Yeah, you resist, you fucking terrorist, etc. But it was also resisting drawing with the light of the candle, you know. So many people didn't see uh, uh, the funny part of it. It's a funny book, actually, in a, in a weird way. But I tried to keep my humor. Night of 3 to 4 of August, sitting in my living room and counting the attacks. 19 attack in 55 minutes. This, I would go to the mountain where my son was with my wife, so he didn't hear, he wasn't knowing what's happening, he was six years old. I was watching Spongebob with him and thinking of going back to Beirut under the bombs, so it's really this capturing this time and, and these two realities existing at the same time. Beirut won't cry, so I took this very uh, postcard image of Beirut. After 19 days, I started crying, so it's answering the Beirut won't cry. Um, this is a book, uh, a drawing that keeps coming. I mean, the question, so it's an explosion, as obviously it's seen. How can I show sound in a drawing? And it's really something I keep asking myself. It's really very, very difficult. And uh, yeah, I don't know if we have sound from here. Yeah. So just let me tell you. So yeah, where was it? Sorry. Uh, so capturing sound, um, yeah. I'd like to finish with this piece of music I recorded uh, during this. So so for I was drawing every day, and at some point I said, "You are a musician, also try to deal with this, with what's happening as a musician." Um, so every night we would hear the bombing uh, of Beirut, and one night, many nights actually, but this is what you will hear, it's an excerpt, it's called Starry Night, uh, where I just go on the balcony and wait and uh, record music, and uh, then there is uh, raids of uh, yeah, Israeli Air Force on it. So I'd like to listen to this with you, and then, do we have time still? It's six minutes? I can, we can put three minutes of it, and...
to you. Yeah, thank you. It's not much time for questions, but, um, um, sorry? Yes. Uh, Please. <laughs> let's do one, let's do it like this. We take one question and one answer, and then we do a break of uh, 10 minutes. Uh, one more? Okay, two questions. Two yeah. questions, but one answer. I'll make it quickly. Yeah. Put yes. I'll, I'll, yeah, we can worry. collect, that's actually good. We can yeah. collect two questions and we do one answer, yeah. yes. I just wonder if y your music is somehow connected to the comic. Is it inspired by the stories you're doing in comics? Or, or is it really like just improvised and more as a dialogue with the musician you're playing with? Um, or maybe should all right, please. Just, just throw them all, I'll, I'll, I'll manage with that. Yeah, actually my question is related to the first one. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for this talk. It was super inspiring. Um, and I usually teach your work to my students to, sh to like illustrate how you, um, how you can visualize acoustics and sounds and because you create this sort of mythology of sound. And now, based on this presentation, my impression is that you are super interested in the limits of comics, like how do we visualize sound, how do we play with time, uh, how do we give back this improvisation and the nature of music in comics. So my question is, uh, because improvisation is not happening with an empty head or an empty heart, so, so when you do these daily comics, like, do, how do you prepare for them? Or, or is it improvised? Or, or like, how do you start doing these comics um, in response to music and in response to your questions? Uh, yeah, I can answer easily both together. Actually, it's nice questions. Um, yeah, there is cross uh, cross influence, but in the beginning, I didn't choose to see it. First, it's discovering this improvised music and then uh, discovering extended technique, put it, putting tubes or balloons and stuff in my trumpet and creating these sounds, pushed me to start working with two hands and to, to have many pens, etc., and to try to go into improvisation with no correction and to draw uh, uh, like this. Um, and in, in return, I think uh, my music has a lot of, we were talking about it this afternoon, of storytelling somehow not only with bombs, of course, obviously, but, but uh, the music itself. I think they are complementary and they cross-pollinate and they are totally, uh, again, like opposites in my head. So the music is so abstract. Uh, my music is abstract, but any music is abstract, as long as you are not singing. Um, if you take the old to draw of Beethoven and you make somebody listen without saying, he might think it's very sad. So, so it's very subjective, this idea of music uh, giving a message. There's no message. And with comics, on the other hand, it's so uh, uh, um, so unabstract, so concrete. Even though you could do abstract comics, but it's very limited. It is really uh, uh, two worlds that are really so uh, um, opposites, at least in my practice or how I think of them. That for a long time I didn't see any any like it was really like even when I play a concert I wouldn't show my comics there like I wouldn't sell my comics on the merch table saying it's like almost two people doing them but with time of course uh, uh, there are many many uh, uh, yeah cross feeding uh, between them um, mainly this idea of trying to capture time to go back to to to, to the scene and to capture it differently and to give it back differently and uh, yeah I don't know how much it answers but it was fast <laughs> That's, that's good. Well, oh, that's, <laughs> that's the beginning of an answer. Um, uh, thank you very much for this uh, wonderful thank talk. Thank you. Uh, very much for also for the sound and visions.